Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to Cyclist Tactics. We're on episode 16 after an excellent performance, absolutely our best race of the season, amassing a whole lot of much, much needed points towards our sponsor objective for the year. Two characters have leveled up. Seems perfect timing for that one to have happened. My character now at level four. No specialization. I kind of thought that at levels two, four, six, eight, so on and so forth, you were going to add a point, but not the case. We have not added a point yet, so not this level, maybe next. So we stay at just one. That That's weird to me to have gone three levels and still only have added one because I think level two is where you get your first. I, I, I guess my estimation on that one was inaccurate, but energy is pretty good out of 78. Energy per turn at seven is, well, tolerable. I mean, it could be better, uh, but I, my attack is ridiculously weak and adding one point gives us literally five more attack and with you know a max of five which is also quite low that that just gives us a whole lot more i mean that's essentially five more energy across the board and relative performance if you go back you could see we were definitely below average that will get us up to average compared to amateur league compared to the, the level one we climb better than everybody else but we are essentially average across the board elsewhere uh, i'll take that that's that's good tyler campbell also reaching level four this time same situation no bonus to specialization we do get an attributes bonus one point to put out there now attack wise he's already at a 16 with five per turn recovery is one less than what i have the energy per turn is much better the overall energy at 74 a little low just a little bit on the low side so i'm going to go ahead and add to that this time wow what a jump that is plus one of that now gives campbell 81 dang that's a lot of energy uh, in comparison and then i think we can add attack energy in the future which will make him that much stronger recovery not as important for campbell campbell is more of a one day or workhorse for the team and i like that i like what we have with that uh these negatives though that hurts a bit i'd love to add something in the future like tech and cobble or mountain uh, just to make campbell a bit more well-rounded we'll see I, I may or may not hang on to campbell going into next season and i think at this point i'm going to be letting christopher ward go and going for somebody else who's a little bit further along towards their levels but has uh, maybe a potential of 10 or better. Pavlov, we're going to hang on to. We're going to play the long game with Pavlov and try to get them through the levels as we are with myself. Uh, Ortega is about to retire, so they're going to be gone. We're going to hang on to Howard, at least in the short term, as a team leader. We hit the month of July with a target that feels achievable. Uh, first off, it's an amateur league, so competition shouldn't be as difficult. It's a sponsor objective, so we've got a chance at some extra points on the day, which we certainly need. We, we still need a fair bit, though we have exceeded the halfway point, but we're also into the last four months of the season with five behind us, so we have less than half to go anyway. Howard's going to be there, which is good because it's a flat, light cobble, 373 node race with only one hill along the way that starts with a downhill and then goes into the climb. And you figure if you could place yourself right before the climb, you could maybe just about bypass the entire thing with one massive push and not necessarily needing the climbing at all, coming off of a cobbled descent right there. That's a good place for Howard to be. I think Howard can maybe just about squeeze that out and bypass the hill entirely, which will set him up for a good finish hopefully we can get placement on this one as it is just a classic speaking of just a classic all but the final race is classics we have three classics and then one three stage race remaining so six stages left to complete on the year what can we do with it we need some points let's see what we can do with only eight teams and after the massive points haul that we brought in last time now sitting at 300 overall we're actually kind of mid-table for the teams that are present for this one. Two teams only bring in three riders, so that's a plus for us. We've got teams with six, five, five, six, 
for their best leaders. A couple teams with seven for their best leader. I don't know why it's showing Christopher Ward as our leader, as obviously Christopher Ward is not the leader when Louise Howard is here. They naturally should have picked them as the leader. So a little confusing on that one. Hopefully there's no bug as we go forward and we have some sort of shortage as it's not showing Howard at all in the list of favorites. But Kuzmin, level eight, flat rating. Uh, it's only flat level one, actually. So Ethan Hall is a flat level two. Vasilev is a level two for flat. So we'll have to watch out for them. Popovich is not going to be a threat level five climber Marco Haas maybe as they've got cobble and a flat level one similar to Howard one level higher than Howard so that's one to watch out for but I think outside of Kuzmin being level eight and just being that much stronger and then Marco Haas I think we've got a great chance of getting at least into the top 10 if not better and as we get this race started, five riders immediately form a small breakaway. 25 in the peloton chasing. I have Pavlov working up front. And then we'll have everybody else dropping to the back and saving their legs for later. We'll see how we do. I'm going to kind of speed through the next little bit. And I'll see you as we get into the later stages of this one. We've already seen the first casualty of the day as one of the leading riders has been dropped. He's in one of the relay riders. So Domestique's already fallen off. You can see Pavlov at just 31 energy isn't going to last a whole lot longer either. Uh, you can see just how much energy has been saved by those who are still in the peloton. Teammates included in that. We've got a fellow level one, but doing way, way, way better than Pavlov at this point in time. So you can see just how hard it is to work at the front right now. I think it's time we start chasing down that breakaway. I'm going to use the last of Pavlov's attack energy to bring the peloton a little bit further along. And that actually splits the field as he can't go with it. Everybody else, though, able to go with. So there's going to be a few more riders dropped here. And the race is now on. So 20 remain in the peloton. And it's time to bring somebody forward, but not everybody. We're going to leave Howard at the back it's christopher ward that's going to come to the front though ward has no attack energy so actually ward just sit on let's go ahead and bring campbell forward and let's put pavlov on auto rest Breakaway of six, still surviving, and they've got a pretty healthy gap. It's not going to be an easy chase. We're seeing more riders being split off already. Campbell able to follow the move. Howard able to follow the move. Christopher Ward not able to follow the move. Zero attack energy left, and Ward is now dropped as well. Down to 18. Again, Campbell coming forward into the front group. Howard, we're going to stay back just a little bit longer. I think we're going to start coming forward here very shortly, though. Okay, Ward, get home on your own. You can only go five nodes per turn, so that is what it is. And the front, the breakaway has split. Breakaway has split, so this is really starting to come down to it. 18 those two are falling off so now we're looking at 18 chasing four and that's your race okay. Campbell advance into that group and let's start moving up with Howard who's looking really good in terms of attack energy with 32 still max attack of eight but only 44 energy remaining still spend six per turn and we are getting pretty close towards the end now so it shouldn't be much of a problem yet but i do suspect that i mean there's the descent already we're going to be pushing into that here very very soon now three riders at the front as another is dropped off and it looks like we're gaining contact with 
the remnants of the break that we're catching now. This could shake things up. That makes 20 there. But again, two of those are going to be exhausted and dropped quite soon. Okay, Campbell is working. And Howard comes forward and you can see just how many riders are now in that sort of position as we begin the descent. We figure we're going to be right here in just a moment catching or at least being one turn exactly behind the breakaway. The remnants of that, that is. With a huge difference between a 14 and a 5, it's obvious where you go. Setting us up for that final push. We catch that next breakaway rider, so now it's 21, but we're that one turn behind. And as we saw from the breakaway group, they are completely bypassing the hill, just as I suspected they probably would. If we advance and get in the front riders, that's going to move us up all this way and get in front of all these guys. I think I like that better for our chances at the sprint. For the sprint at the end so go ahead and advance and we'll confirm that position those three still won't be an easy catch but you can see just the way that group is splitting up that they're probably not going to have a whole lot and you can see just what we're getting out of the action here as the peloton is shattering after this climb campbell can go with the front group it's not a max attack so that's good and Howard, likewise, can go with the front group and not be involved in a max attack. That's good. Ooh, but three, four, five riders go even further, and I don't get the option to follow any of them. Campbell's going to have to lead out. Uh, do I want to drop back at this point? Go ahead and drop back. Don't relay. Campbell's going to have to give his all on this turn to try to regain contact with those front riders who got a little further ahead. Oh, the breakaway, the breakaway made it. They crossed the line. Are you kidding me? Okay, Campbell, everything you've got to lead this thing out. Bring us back up there. That's Howard to follow. Ah, oh, so unfortunate. Really don't like necessarily how that works. That you you see a max move and and you're following the max move, and then all of a sudden, riders behind that are 20 wheels down can sprint past you. Really, 20 wheels down to do that? I mean, that was a huge group. There was 13 riders at the front. You're not going to ride past 13 riders unnoticed without anybody being able to grab your wheel. <sighs> Anyway, uh, Campbell stay at the front. Yeah, Campbell stay at the front. Wow, I can't believe Breakaway held on. They won this thing. I was really surprised how quickly we reached the end though. And now the top six positions are already locked down. Campbell, cross the line. I believe that is good enough for a top 10. And this is what I don't understand, right? I'm in... I'm, I'm not in the P0, I'm in the P1 position. The P0 can't attack, which is weird. But the P1 can attack. We're in the P1, but I can't attack. I should be able to go five nodes further. There's no reason that I shouldn't be able to go five nodes further. It just makes no sense. Makes no sense. I, I do not understand this system. I don't see why we're that far tied down and why we weren't able to push harder, further, faster. Did we even get in the top 10 at all? I don't know. Game mechanics. Hmm. I know we went for realism, but certain things... Certain things leave me scratching my head as to why. Howard grabs ninth. We'll get some points. But he should have been higher. Should have been higher. Uh, breakaway staying away. Good on them. But after that... 
this small group attacked in the way that Howard should have been able to attack the line. Why were they able to do it and Howard wasn't on, on the final move? I get why they were able to go based on what, I, what has been explained to me of the mechanics. I understand, I thought I understand why they are able to attack and we weren't because we were in relay. The relay guys can't attack even if there's 10 of them there which is odd, but whatever. Okay, relay follows relay. The group right behind them at the front are the ones capable of making an attack, launching an attack. And the relay guys can't respond to it. So I was setting up a push for the finish line by trying to move up our position. Meanwhile, they attacked and I wasn't able to follow. So damn it, I effed that up. Okay, I was anticipating and I read that situation wrong. But then the exact same scenario plays out in the opposite way as we make a push for the line with Campbell, who ends up 11th, probably, maybe 12th. I make the push for the line with Campbell to lead out Howard in the exact same format that these guys attacked us. And we should have been able to follow that up with four, five, five more nodes. Five more nodes would have cut that time down uh, enough to get seventh, maybe sixth. But then I wasn't allowed to. So I, I just, if I understood that mechanic and how it worked, we'd be finishing fourth, fifth, or sixth in this race and not down in ninth. But it's way over my head on how that mechanic works because again group a pulled that move on us and then i try to pull that move a turn later not an option don't get it i don't get it it is worth some points at least uh campbell 12th so right there it's worth 25 we do get the times one because it was a sponsor objective. So we gain a little something. It pushes us from 206 to 231. We need to get above 314. So we are closing in. We're now just 100 points away from, 103 points away from our objective for the year. And definitely getting closer to the minimum objective for the year. But I, I feel like that should have been more. We should have gotten more out of that race. I just, I, I don't get how that mechanic works yet. I really just don't understand it at, at this point. And I'm getting a little frustrated with it because you get told it works in one way and then you see it play out that way and go, okay. And then you try to mimic it and it doesn't work. So if I understood that mechanic, I could defend it a lot better. I could utilize it a lot better. Ay, ay, ay. Well, anyway, I guess that's on me. That's on me. That's not on them. If only I understood it. Obviously, I leave this one frustrated, but it's not over yet. We've got three more opportunities to get the points we need for the year. Pavlov right on the verge of leveling up. I'd love to see him come out of this one with the XP he needs to hit level two and get his first skill point. That'd be really helpful. But that's going to do it for this one. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.